So you've probably read or watched a whole bunch of iPhone 10 reviews already. So you know about the new bezel-less design, the OLED screen with that infamous notch, face ID, all emojis, the new gestures. So I didn't want to rush my review, which is why I've been using the iPhone 10 for the past month since it launched to find out if it really does live up to the hype and if you should actually buy one. So let's get straight into it. First of all, the notch doesn't bother me. It's not ideal, it causes some apps to have letterboxing, and if you zoom in on video, it basically cuts into it. And it also covers up a big chunk of the notification bar, so you don't get a battery percentage indicator or headphone icon unless you swipe down to get the control panel. It does kind of make the iPhone 10 feel a bit like a first generation device, something the iPhone 11 might fix, but it's really not a big deal, and you do quickly get used to it. And to be honest, it's the only thing that slightly takes away from what is otherwise an absolutely beautiful screen. Unlike the iPhone 8's LCD display, the 10 uses an OLED panel that's sharper, brighter, more vibrant thanks to the infinite contrast. It also supports high dynamic range, so you can watch HDR movies on Netflix and Amazon Video. Add to that the impressive True Tone display that adapts the screen's color temperature to the ambient lighting around you, and you've got, in my opinion, the best display on a phone right now. But what really makes it stand out is how Apple's managed to fit this taller 5.8 inch screen into a body that's not much bigger than the standard iPhone 8. Picking it up, it feels much more like an 8 than an 8 Plus, both in terms of size, so it's still usable one-handed, and software, as it doesn't have things like the landscape mode for the home screen, like the 8 Plus does. The 10 feels great to hold though, there's a reassuring weight to it, and despite having a glass body, I don't actually find it that slippery, although as you'd expect, it does pick up smudges and fingerprints really easily. The vertical camera bump is still a bit annoying though, I'm worried it's the first thing that will get scratched, and dirt always seems to gather around it, but of course you could just fix that by putting a case on it. And of course there's still no headphone jack, which is annoying, but something we just have to accept on more and more phones these days. But on the plus side, it can survive an up to a meter of water, thanks to the IP67 rating, and the stereo speakers sound great. So compared to the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, the 10 has a nicer screen, thinner bezel, and the second camera lens has a slightly wider aperture. But none of that fundamentally changes your day-to-day -day user experience. What does, though, is the home button, or lack of it. Now you unlock the phone with your face, face ID, or of course you could still use your pin code, that's still there. While it feels more futuristic and more often than not does work seamlessly, overall it just feels a bit of a slower process than using the fingerprint reader. With Face ID you have to position the phone in front of your face, the lighting around you can affect how quick it is, it actually works better in the dark thanks to the IR sensor. I do think Face ID and facial unlocking is the future, and the true depth face scanning tech is seriously impressive here. But like a lot of Apple's innovations, it also feels like a bit of a pain in the ass for a while until you get used to it, which you do, and then it's not really an issue. But there's another use of this true depth camera, and that's an emojis, basically animated emojis that mimic your facial expressions. If you're anything like me, you'll play with them for a bit, think, oh, that's actually really cool, and then show it to a couple of friends, but then never actually use it, ever, really. But still, it's an impressive tech demo of their Face ID technology. But the other big change here is the new gestures. You swipe up from the bottom to go back to the home screen, swipe up and right to bring up recently used apps, swipe down from the top right for the control panel, and down from the top left for the notification bar. I think gestures are definitely the way forward and it feels really slick on the iPhone 10. Although I do think a lot of people like the idea of a home button, a physical home button, where if something goes wrong or they get confused, it's easy to return home. And you do still have the power button if you need to restart. Now the dual 12 megapixel camera setup is also slightly improved on the 10, with the second lens offering a wider f2.4 aperture versus f2.8 on the 8 Plus, which makes it better in low light. Over the past few weeks, I've been using the Pixel 2 XL and the iPhone 10 a lot, and I even made a camera comparison video where I found the Pixel 2 does just come out on top. The iPhone can sometimes be a little bit exposed and struggles with highlights. But I did usually prefer the iPhone's colors, and it's more versatile thanks to the second telephoto lens, the higher frame rate 4K 60 video, and 240 FPS full HD slow motion video. So in my experience, the best camera is on the Pixel, but the iPhone is a close second and has a lot more options. I think my biggest issue with the iPhone 8 is battery life, but the Plus models always offered much better battery lives, usually two or three hours more. So how long does the iPhone 10 last? 
Well, the good news is it's closer to the plus. I usually have around 25% of my battery left by 10 p.m. after a normal day of use, which is decent and a fair bit better than the iPhone 8. So it will easily last you through a full day. And it does also support fast and wireless Qi charging. But what I think is a bit unforgivable is on this super premium thousand pound phone, they still don't bundle in a fast charger, something almost every other Android phone does these days. So that's the iPhone 10. And I think as easy as it is to dismiss Apple as arrogant, offering overpriced phones and maybe losing touch with the average consumer, they are driving innovation, sometimes whether we like it or not. And you do have to respect that. I think Face ID and gestures are the future of smartphones, even if they do take a while to get used to. And while it's not perfect, there's definitely a need for better software optimizations around the notch, it should really come with a fast charger, and it is eye-wateringly expensive. After using it for a month, I really, really like the iPhone X. The 8 Plus is £200 cheaper, but it just feels dull and kind of old-fashioned in comparison, the last of the old iPhones. The iPhone X, on the other hand, is new and different, futuristic, and if it's the difference of five or ten pounds a month on a two-year contract, I'd say go for it. So that's what I think, but what about you? Are you a fan of the new iPhone X? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, click that like and subscribe button and help me get to 200,000 subscribers. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.